بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم پاکستان سعید حسین حیدر بیک ود کارپوریٹ گورننس لاسٹ ٹائم وی ور ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی گورنن سائیکل اینڈ دی کارپوریٹ گورنن سائیکل اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈیولپ آن ان مور ڈیٹیل دی ڈفرنٹ فارمس آف کمپنیز اینڈ ان دوز وی ول بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی سول پروپرائٹرشپ اینڈ دی پارٹنرشپ سو لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن وین وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ فارمس آف کمپنیز دا سول پروپرائٹرشپ actually emerges as the most common form of doing business for a very simple reason that it is the most simplest of all organizations or all companies and it is the easiest to do business also. However, there are pros and cons which we are going to be looking at. When we look at the sole proprietorship, a business that legally has no separate existence from its owner, income and losses are taxed on the individual's personal income tax return. The sole proprietorship is not a legal entity. A sole proprietorship, there is no legal distinction between the individual and the business. Thus, every asset is owned by the proprietor and they have unlimited liability. Examples could include writers, consultants, local restaurants, shops, and home-based businesses. And ladies and gentlemen, when we are looking at this sole proprietorship, it has a simplistic mechanism of doing business. It does not have any reporting mechanisms. The most that has to be done is to ensure that taxes are paid properly and secondly, that nothing is being done illegally. Otherwise, there are no cross responsibilities, there is no cross uh, monitoring, uh, there are no uh, stakeholders or shareholders uh, in persona and besides that, what we see is that uh, there are no regulatory bodies of a sole proprietorship and therefore, it is easier for homegrown businesses or individual businesses to flourish under such an environment. But it is not limited to a home or limited to only a small business. There are different proprietorships around the world in which they tend to have a national context or even a global context and working from different sites and having thousands of employees. So it doesn't mean that you are limited to grow, but however, uh, the liability is unlimited, which can become a complex problem uh, in the future. And, and another benefit of it is that you can uh, have only single taxation. Now, when we look at a partnership, then in a partnership, uh, there is more than one individual and there are different partners who are involved in it. There is a regulatory framework, which is under the Partnership Act. And in most cases, these partnerships also have unlimited liability. So, Talking about a partnership, it is a formal arrangement by two or more parties to manage and operate a business and share its profits. A partnership like a sole proprietorship is legally and financially inseparable from its owners. Profits and losses may be passed through to the owners, personal income for tax purposes, debts and liabilities pass through as well. So again, in a partnership, what we see is, is that it is like a multiplication of a sole proprietorship, but there are more individuals in it. It is regulated by, uh, it is regulated by uh, the Partnership Act. A partnership can be registered. It can be uh, non-registered. Usually what we see in a country like Pakistan is that a partnership deed is developed. Then there is a partnership form and then you get it registered with the district registration office. And then you can also have a separate tax number. So it's not the individual tax number, but it would be a separate tax number, but the liability would be unlimited. And again, what we see is, is that the taxation would be double because on one side, the partnership is going to be taxed. And then when the profits go to the different partners, then they will also be taxed. But the liability over here is that uh, there is unlimited liability, which can be a problem uh, when the business tends to grow to a larger scale. When we look at the types of partnerships, then the types of partnerships basically are the general partnership and the limited liability partnership. Now, both of these are basically governed by different laws. One is the Partnership Act and the other one is the Limited Partnership uh, Act again. Uh, again, why uh, do we have the Limited Partnership Act is basically to ensure that the partnerships can have limited liabilities, while in the normal partnership what we see is is that they have unlimited liabilities. So that is the basic difference. And again, as we move forward in corporate governance, we'll be looking back at all of these and see 
that what are the other distinguishing features amongst these different forms of business organizations. Thank you.